Now, if you could capture the full value of the Amazon ecosystem, just in terms of one dimension, namely that it is the largest water park on our planet. It is the largest carbon sink on our planet. And we translate those in terms of the value that these represent to our societies in South America with two more degrees of global warming, many of you know the Amazon ecosystem will cease to function, will affect virtually the entire hydrological flows and water economy of this whole continent. So, friends, the idea is not when we attach an economic value to then transact it in the marketplace. In fact, I would argue if countries across the world began to understand quite how dramatic the value is in the future of our economic development prospects of our ecosystems, of our resources, then maybe the opposite would happen. We would actually issue laws to protect nature. We would increase protected areas. We would have far more indigenous peoples managed lands and reserves. And we would have far harsher laws and criteria for the private sector and business to conduct business in a way that is not destructive or in that form destructive. So the automatic logic that if you look at value and if you look at what is happening for our planet through the lens of an economic analysis, that you automatically end up in a capitalist economy is not one that we stand for. It is not one that we have written about. And it is not one that I hope you will automatically equate with this today. Therefore, I appeal to you, I'll stop here because we want to obviously have much more interaction, is to say to you, our view, and you know summits can only deliver something imperfect in the world of almost 200 nations who are essentially discussing each other in these discussions. What we want to hopefully enable is for people to begin to look at sustainable development with a clear eye as to what has gone wrong in the last 20 years, just to have the right ideas. And they even have opportunities to do things differently. And I'm slightly different with Larissa. The technology is always a matter of GMOs, of paper rights, of control. The energy revolution that is beginning to happen in all the terms of renewable energy today is not happening by the traditional energy companies. It is not the centralized model that we have become accustomed to and imprisoned to of energy multinational corporations. It is happening from a bottom up. And it is happening on a scale that only would have been possible. And we know that actually is a technology option that is good for us, it's good for the planet, and it is also good for people. How do we get any of these things to happen? Not by letting the market determine, not by passing laws, by passing energy policies, by introducing feeding tariffs, by making the subsidies for fossil fuels go down in order to correct what is an unfair competition in today's economy.